This is part 17 of Bootstrap Tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss creating a drop-down menu using Bootstrap. Let's understand this with an example. Here is what we want to do. When we click on this link which says drop-down, that's when we want the drop-down menu to appear. When I click on that again, we want the drop-down menu to disappear. Let's see how to achieve this. Let's flip to Visual Studio. The first thing that I'm going to do here is create a div element and set its class to drop-down. So basically this class specifies that we are creating a drop-down menu and within this development the first thing that we need is this anchor element. In our case this anchor element is the trigger element. So what's a trigger element? Trigger element is the one which when we click either the drop-down menu appears or disappears. So in our case the trigger element is this anchor element. So let's create that anchor element. So within the div element I'm going to create an anchor element and set its class to drop down toggle. This class is required on a trigger element and we need another thing on this anchor element and that is data dash toggle attribute. And I'm going to set this data dash toggle attribute to drop down. This attribute is required on the trigger element to either show or hide the drop down menu. So on this anchor element, in our case, which is the trigger element, we need these two things, class set to drop down toggle and data dash toggle attribute set to drop down. And then we obviously need to display the text for our drop down. So for now, let's display drop down. And then we need this little triangle that's pointing downwards. To get this little triangle that's pointing downwards, I'm going to use a span element and set its class to caret. So basically this span element with that class is going to display that downward pointing arrow. Finally, we need to build the drop down menu items and to do that we use an unordered list. So I'm going to use an unordered list here and I'm going to set its class to drop down menu. So this class specifies that we are building the drop down menu items. So within the unordered list, let's build the menu items themselves and for that I'm going to use a list item and within this list item I'm going to create an anchor element. For now, I'm going to set its href attribute to a hash symbol but you can point it to any valid URL you want. And then the text for the menu item is going to be action1. Similarly, let's build two more menu items. So the second one says action2 third one says action 3. Alright, so let's save our changes and when we reload this page notice we get a link which says drop down with that little downward pointing arrow. When I click on that the menu shows up. When I click on that again the menu disappears. So here we have a anchor drop down. Here is the HTML required and the classes and their purpose. At the moment what we have here is a hyperlink drop-down. The triggering element here is a hyperlink. Now instead of a hyperlink drop-down like this, we want a button drop-down that looks like this. So here the triggering element is a button. To get a button drop-down, all we have to do is replace this anchor element with a button element. Let's reload this page. Notice we get the button drop-down as expected. And here is the HTML required for that. At the moment, we haven't applied any of the Bootstrap button classes on this button element and that's why it's using the browser defaults. Let's apply Bootstrap button classes. I'm going to apply BTN and BTN primary classes. Let's reload this page. Notice now the Bootstrap button styles are applied. And here is the HTML required for that. The next thing that we want to do is create a drop down menu header. Notice here we have three actions action 1, action 2, action 3, and these actions have got their own header which says header 1. Similarly, at the bottom we have three more actions. Again, these three actions have their own header. To create these headers, all we have to do is create a list item with its class set to drop down header. Let's look at this in action. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So we have three actions here. We want a header for them. So I'm going to create a list item and set its class to drop down header. 
and the text for this header is going to be header 1. Let's bold this text and to do that I'm going to include a strong element. So let's make a copy of these list items and let's change the text here to header 2. Let's save our changes, reload this page. Notice now we have two headers. You cannot select the headers, you can only select the menu items under those headers. And here is the HTML required for that. Let's now discuss how to create a menu divider. Notice here we have a divider between the first set of actions and the second set of actions. To create this menu divider, all we have to do is create a list item with its class set to divider. Let's look at this in action. So we want a divider between these two set of actions. So I'm going to insert a list item here and set its class to divider. Let's save our changes, reload this page. Notice now we have a divider between the first and second set of actions. And here is the HTML required for that. Next, let's discuss how to disable a menu item. To disable a menu item, all we have to do is use disabled class on that respective menu item. Let's disable action 2 from both header 1 and header 2. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So here we have action 2 under header 1. So on this list item, I'm going to use disabled class. Let's do the same thing with action 2 under header 2. Let's save our changes, reload our page. Notice now action 2 under header 1, action 2 under header 2, both of them are disabled as expected. And look at the cursor style. The cursor style changes to a stop sign indicating that this menu item is disabled and cannot be selected. Here's the HTML for that. Finally, let's discuss how to create a drop-down menu whose items expand upwards. At the moment, when we click on this drop-down, the menu items expand downwards. Instead, we want them to expand upwards. To achieve this, I'm going to cut all this drop-down HTML. I'm going to create another development and paste the drop-down HTML inside that development. And on this outer development, I'm going to use drop up class instead of drop down. Let's save our changes, reload this page. Now notice the little triangle points upwards and when I click on that the drop down menu items expand upwards. We don't have enough room on the top so let's include a few break elements here. Let's save our changes, reload the page. Now look at that. We have the menu items expanding upwards instead of downwards. Here's the HTML for that. Thank you for listening and have a great day.